recording. Okay, so guys, on today, um, we are going to be going over forces and free body diagrams and basically understand forces conceptually. Last class period, um, um, we, we basically introduced forces. Um, we talked about the normal force. We talked about the gravitational force. The class period before that, we even talked about Newton's three laws of motion. Today, we're going to kind of elaborate on all those concepts and to kind of tie all those things in together into a coherent worldview. Okay. Um, so we're just going to elaborate more on forces today and being able to correctly understand force diagrams or free body diagrams. Um now, let me go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see the Schoology folder for today. Okay, so, okay, so we're in sixth period. Okay, so guys, on today, um, in today's Thursday, so let's click there. Okay, so here's what we're going to do for today. So, um, again, as soon as I get done lecturing and going over the material, we're going to get started on this worksheet together. It's called Understanding Forces Conceptually. So, uh, it's your responsibility to have a pen and paper to write down everything that I'm writing. Okay, uh, so we're going to do problems one through six together. Okay, so one through six we're going to do together. And then the back, number seven through 12, you're going to finish on your own. Um, and then you guys, you're going to take a picture of your work and you're going to upload that in your school into Schoology to count as your grade. Now, guys, um, 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 whenever you guys are writing out your answers, you do not have to draw these diagrams here. Um, I'm, you know, I mean, there's, I mean, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm just mainly looking for your solutions to all 12 problems. Okay. And then you're going to upload that, you know, take a picture of it and upload that into Schoology. Okay. Um, so that is the, well, that is what is on the agenda for today. Um, okay. Um, and right here where it says understanding forces conceptually. So this is the submission box here. As soon as you guys get done, as soon as you guys are done writing, you're going to take a picture of it. You're going to take a picture of it and you're going to upload it into the submission box right here. Okay. And again, that will count as your grade for the day. All right. So that's that's what's on the agenda. So let's get ready to start going over the material. Again, I will let you guys know when to begin writing. And again, the session is, is being recorded and it will be uploaded onto my YouTube page. And for those of you guys that don't know, the YouTube link is in the second six weeks folder. Okay. All right, guys, let me get ready to open up this PowerPoint here. Okay, so as I said, the goal of today is to understand forces conceptually. Okay, so let's start with a very, very simple picture here, um, a very simple example. Okay, suppose that I have a physics textbook, and this physics textbook is sitting on this table here. Okay. As this physics textbook sits on this table, there are two forces that are acting on the textbook. Obviously, there's the force of gravity, and the force of gravity is pulling straight down. And then there's, there are, there's also the normal force. There's a normal force from the surface of the table pushing up on the book. Okay. And guys, if this book is at rest, it's not moving, it's not going anywhere, it should be obvious that these forces have to be balanced. So, for instance, let's say the gravitational force here on this book was a negative 5 newtons. Okay. So... If that force was a negative 5 newtons, then that immediately tells us that the force that's pointed up must be positive 5 newtons. Okay. So here's the first important thing I need for you guys to remember for today. Is that 
whenever you guys are labeling forces on a force diagram, um, all of your down forces you want to call negative and all of your up forces you want to call positive, okay? Because force, force includes a magnitude and a direction, okay? Uh, no, you do not start writing now. Um, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to let you know when, I'm going to let you know when we're going to actually start the assignment right now. I'm just going over the important stuff for the assignment. Okay. To answer your question. Um, hopefully. Okay. okay. So Josh, to answer your question, um, you asked about left and right. So same thing. Left is what you call negative and right is what you call positive. Okay. So, uh, just like a coordinate system. Okay. Good question. Um, which you know brings us to our next point here. So suppose we have a book sitting here, and suppose we have two people pulling on the textbook. So we have one person pulling on the textbook from the left, and the other person is pulling on the textbook from the right. Okay, and let's suppose this person here, they are pulling with negative 15 newtons of force. Okay. And if that's the case, that means the person on the right must be pulling with positive 15 newtons of force. So the basic idea here, the basic idea is that um, uh, whenever, whenever you have balanced forces acting on your object, that means your object is at rest. Or it could be moving at a constant velocity, depending on the scenario. In this case right here, you know, since the book was already at rest, Newton's first law says an object in rest will stay at rest. So if two people decide to pull on this physics textbook and they're pulling with the same magnitude of force, then that means the object's not going to move. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to, you know, you know, it's going to stay at rest because that's Newton's first law. An object in rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So in this case right here, these forces are balanced. Okay. But what if we add a situation right here? Okay, so guys, imagine we had this book sitting on this table here, and two people decide to pull on the book. Okay, and by the way, I'm going to throw out a number here. Let us pretend this book has a mass of four kilograms. Okay. And guys, so two people are pulling on this book. Let us say that one person is pulling on the book with 15 newtons of force, and the other person is pulling on the book with... Three newtons of force. Okay, so someone tell me um, um, if this was the case, what's going to happen to the book? In what direction would the book accelerate? To the left or to the right? In this case, right, right. here. Left. To the, to, yeah, to the left. It's going to accelerate to the left, um, and everybody should be able to see. It's going to accelerate in the direction of the dominant force. Okay. Um, but guys. What if I wanted to know the magnitude of the acceleration of this book here? Okay. What if I wanted to know that? Well, that's going to require us to look at Newton's second law. And if y'all remember, Newton's second law says that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. But there's something else I want to add to this equation, something that I hadn't said before. Okay. Uh, in front of this F, it's important that I put this symbol here. Okay. Guys, this symbol here stands for sigma. That's the Greek symbol sigma. And what sigma means, sigma just means sum. Okay. Anytime you guys see this symbol in your physics class or any of your math classes, it just means sum. So in other words, it just means add everything up. So this is the full definition of Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that, that the sum of my forces acting on my object is equal to mass times acceleration of the object. Again, this symbol here means sum. Guys, remember that because we're going to see this symbol over and over and over again in this course because we're going to be using this Newton's second law a lot. So anytime y'all see that symbol there, it looks like a it look it looks like a weird E. Is Are that is no, not yet. I'm really, I'm I'm let you know when you're writing. I'm just going over some important points. So I'm just kind of basically going over the concepts and explaining what things mean. But I'm gonna let you guys know when you guys have to start writing. Okay. Right now you're just listening. Okay, so this means sum. 
Okay, sigma stands for sum. So basically, guys, um, if I wanted to take this equation and rearrange it and solve for acceleration, this is what I would get. I would, uh, it's basically, Newton's Newton second law says acceleration is equal to the sum of your forces divided by your object's mass. So let us look at this particular situation right here. Okay. Uh, the, well, if I add up all these forces here, so to be, to be specific, there are two forces. If I add up the two forces acting on this object, can someone tell me what is the result, what is the sum of the forces? When you add up this force plus this force, what do you get, guys? This plus this. So, guys, it, sh it should be obvious that that's a negative 15. So, negative 15 combined with positive 3. Negative 12. Negative 12, exactly. Thank you. So, the sum... The sum of my force, the sum of my forces here is negative 12. And what is my mass? Remember I said the, the, the book has a mass of 4 kilograms. So if I do the math here, if you take negative 12 and divide it by 4, that gives you negative 3 meters per second squared. So in this case, guys, for this specific example here, um, what's going on is that the book will accelerate at 3 meters per second squared to the left. That's what that negative means. Okay, so let's move on to another example. Now that you guys know how to use the full definition of Newton's second law. Again, so we're just we're just elaborating on concepts for right now. Okay, now guys, imagine that I have an ice hockey puck. And an ice hockey puck is sliding across a, um, this surface here, the surface of this ice. Now, obviously, if it's sliding across ice, friction is negligible. So we can pretty much ignore friction. We can even pretend it's not there because it's just sliding across the ice. And guys, while the hockey puck slides across this ice, um, there's obviously, if we ignore friction, there's obviously two forces acting on it. There's the gravitational force pulling down, but there's also the normal force of the surface of the ice pushing up on the puck. Okay, guys, remember what Newton's first law says. Newton's first law says if there are no unbalanced forces acting on this object, and clearly there are no unbalanced forces acting on this object because we're ignoring friction. It's ice. You know, you can pretty much ignore friction. So Newton's first law says for an object in motion, an object will stay in motion and will remain in motion and just keep moving at a constant velocity. Okay. And again, um, that's kind of your every, your everyday experience. You ever, you know, take something and you slide it across ice. It just keeps going for the most part. Now, but imagine for a second that someone decides to come along and they want to kick the, this puck here. So right at the exact moment that they kick this puck, uh, Newton's second law tells us in this situation here, the ice puck should accelerate. Uh, to be specific, because it's going to start speeding up. Why is it going to start speeding up? Because now there's an unbalanced force acting on it. So everybody got that? So unbalanced forces causes objects to accelerate okay um, uh, let's deal with some more concepts um, 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 let, let me give another example um, what if I have a beach ball here so imagine this boy here this boy here decides that he wants to throw this beach ball and guys kind of imagine in your mind that, that that this beach ball is flying in this direction so it's already been released from the boy's hand and it's in the air, it's flying, and it's flying in this direction. Right at the exact moment that that beach ball is released from his hands, imagine that um, a force decides to blow up against the beach ball. So imagine the wind comes along and blows up against the beach ball. So guys, someone tell me, at the exact moment that that ball is flying in the air and the wind starts blowing, what do you guys think is going to happen to the beach ball here? Is it going to speed up or slow down? Speed up. 
at that exact moment while it's in motion. What do y'all think? Slow down. Slow down. You're exactly right. It's going to slow down. And that should be obvious because it's moving this way, but there's a force acting against it to kind of resist this motion. So it's going to slow down. So right at the exact moment that the wind blows, it's going to slow down. So here's something I need for you guys to, to, to keep in mind. Um, as a general rule, whenever forces acts against the direction of motion, the object will always be slowing down. But let us consider another situation. Let us consider a situation where the boy, once again, he decides to throw the beach ball. So the ball comes out of his hands. And at the exact moment, at the exact moment that the ball flies out of his hand, out of his hands, imagine a wind decides to come along and blows against the beach ball um, um, in this direction. Well, it blows in the direction of motion. Let me say that. So in this particular example here, would the beach ball speed up or slow down? Speed up. The beach ball is going to speed up. Okay. So, um, so that's something I need for you guys to remember because this is going to be important whenever we come to the worksheet that we're going to do today, that whenever the force, whenever the force acts in the direction of motion, the object is always speeding up. Whenever the force acts opposite direction of motion, the object is always slowing down. I'm going to say that again. Whenever the force acts in the direction of motion, the object is, um, um, is going to always be speeding up. Whenever the force acts against the direction of motion or acts opposite motion, then the object is going to be always slowing down. Okay. Um, so that was a situation where we had one force acting on our moving object. But let me ask you guys a question. What do we do in situations where we have more than one force acting on our moving object? So, to illustrate that, let me show you guys a brief video clip um, to help make sense of what I'm talking about. So, let me go ahead and close this PowerPoint. Okay, and let me open up this video clip. So, in order to make sense of what I'm talking about, uh, I'm going to show you guys um, a, a brief video clip of me two years ago. Oh, let me go show my screen. Um, two years ago, um, I decided I wanted to go skydiving. Okay, so this was something I had never done before. So, you know, I was I was curious to try it. Um, so I went to um, Skydive Spaceland, which is in San Marcos, Texas. Um, and, of course, I jumped out of an airplane for the first time. And this was back in, this was December of 2019. So I want to show you guys this brief video clip here. And then um, 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 as soon as I show it, we're then, um, um, we're going to, we're then going to discuss the physics, is what's, uh, the physics of what's happening so that we can make sense of these force diagrams. Okay, so guys, what, what, what we're going to do, we're going to look at a couple of minutes of the video first. And then after we look at a couple of minutes of the video first, we're going to we're going to analyze the force diagrams and determining when is it that I'm speeding up? When is it that I'm slowing down? And these are the concepts that we're going to use on our worksheet. Yeah. Y'all know, why don't we take just a wee little bit of time explain to the friends and family what are you doing out here today at Spaceland San Marcos? Hey guys, this is my first time going skydiving. Letting y'all know, I am afraid of heights, but that's okay. That's all right, so am I, man. <laughs> if I can do it, y'all can do it. That's right, so right. I see you're wearing an altimeter. Yep. So what are you doing at 6,000 feet on the way back down? Okay, 6,000 feet, we're gonna get ready to pull the parachute. That's right. Reach out, touch the orange ball. Pull it. That's right, man. You're going to save your own life today. You don't All need right. cod back there to do it, but guess what? You got cod in the fabric of your life back there. Okay, so guys, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna fast forward to the jump here. Keep in mind, this jump was made at 14,000 feet. So obviously, there's a lot of physics going on here. Um, 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 
So as I'm jumping, be thinking about the various forces involved so that we can discuss this. Hey, slam, slam, Marcus, baby. Let's have some fun. I'll see you right outside. How about you, Marcus? Oh, I'm excited. Oh, oh yeah. I got to go over it to see what it looks like. All right, let's have some fun, guys. We'll see you right outside. Hey, my man, here we are back safe and sound on the ground. What do you got to say about that? Tell all the people at home at TV yeah, Land. Great. I didn't know I was going to get so exhausted. But, I, you know, I couldn't feel my hands for a while, but I'm cool. I'm good. I'm back to ground in one piece. Mom, I'm okay. Is this like a we're roller coaster video? Again. Am I going to make real it good or what? <laughs> Brad, well, you know what? Thank you so much for taking right, with. Hey, I had a great you. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there. Okay, so guys, let us um 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 let us go into detail what's happening here. Okay. Um, so so guys, the moment that I jumped out of the airplane, okay, let me let me silence the sound here. Um, okay, so guys, someone tell me when I jumped out of this airplane. The moment I made that jump, what was the dominant force acting on me? Anyone? So right at this moment, what was the dominant force? Was it gravity pulling you? Gravity, exactly. Um, I heard someone said the wind, and yeah, it is true that the wind is acting on me, but I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about, the dominant force, right at this exact moment, the dominant force is gravity. So gravity is the dominant force acting on me. So let me let me draw that. Okay. So um, gravity is the dominant force acting on me. So if gravity is the dominant force acting, clearly I'm going to be accelerating downward. Okay, hold on. Let me let me draw my arrow better than that. So. Clearly, I'm going to be accelerating downward because gravity is the dominant force, okay? And, um, and guys, y'all can clearly see the rate of acceleration is large because notice how far I'm already away from the plane, like that. Um, so, you know, negative 9.8 meters per second squared is pretty large acceleration. 
But uh, as I continue to fall, and as I continue to fall and my velocity increases and I, and, I, and I go faster and faster and faster, another force acts on me and that force picks up in magnitude. What are the forces that, guys? What are the forces acting on me now? Anyone else want to tell me? So I heard someone say it earlier. What is the other force acting on me here? wind the wind exactly so the wind is acting on me um and guys in physics that force of wind that is acting on me this is physicists call that force air resistance so i'm gonna draw the force of air acting on me because clearly there's air resistance okay now guys as i fall um, that this force gets bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually this force balances gravity. Okay, guys, right at the exact moment that this force right here balances gravity, guess what? I'm now falling at a constant velocity. In fact, I'm just cruising down toward the ground. Um, in fact, um, 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 because I'm cruising at a constant velocity, I can't even feel my fall. So, guys, this is why skydiving is not so bad. This is why you should not be afraid to go skydiving because the moment you reach this constant velocity here, and by the way, there's a term that physicists have for that. We call that terminal velocity. The moment you reach terminal velocity, you can't feel the fall. So it's not like you're being in a roller coaster where, you know, you're in a roller coaster and you're just accelerating straight down and you kind of just feel, you know, just kind of feel your stomach nodding up. Like you feel that acceleration in your stomach. No, so like if you're cruising at a constant velocity, you can't even feel the fall. Um, now, uh, guys, uh, as I'm cruising downward, notice at this point right here, I decide to deploy my parachute. So the moment that the parachute deployed, um, as terms of the forces now acting on these objects here, so me, this guy, and this guy, uh, which force is now bigger the moment this parachute came out? Which one of these forces is bigger? Anyone tell me? Maybe the air? The air, yeah. The air is now bigger than gravity. Okay. So the air is now bigger than gravity. So I'm going to draw an arrow. And hey, what? You start falling slower, right? It, well, it, 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 exactly. And that's, what, that's, what, that's, that's exactly what I'm getting at. So now um, air resistance, air resistance becomes the dominant force. Okay. So you guys see I'm, I'm drawing this arrow bigger than gravity. So now that the air resistance, now that air resistance is the dominant force, the moment my parachute was deployed, what am I doing now? What do y'all think? Am I slowing down or speeding up here? Anyone? Slowing down. Slowing down. And guys, you clearly see that I'm slowing down because notice how the, the cameraman got out in front of, uh, uh, he, he got out ahead of me. So clearly the moment that parachute deployed, I began slowing down. And of course, the guys, the reason why the um, the force of air resistance is bigger because a parachute has a large surface area, so it's able to gather a lot of wind. So um, air got bigger. So uh, so the, the key thing that I want you guys to know here is that um, whenever you have more than one force acting on your object, okay, uh, basically the object s slows down if it's moving against the direction of the of the of the dominant force. In other words, is if it's moving opposite the direction of the, the, the dominant force. So here the dominant force is air resistance, and I'm moving opposite the direction of the dominant force. So clearly I'm going to be slowing down. Okay. Um, let me stop sharing my screen here. Um, um, guys, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to show you guys one more video clip before we start the assignment because I want to be sure that you guys understand these various concepts here. Um, so, um, let me go ahead and exit out of the video there. So remember, as a general rule, if the object is moving in the opposite direction of the normal, of the, of the dominant force, you know, the object is slowing down. If it moves in the direction of the dominant force, it's going to be speeding up. Yeah. So that's what happens whenever you have more than one force acting on your object. So let us consider, consider one more example of this. And this, this video clip is a little shorter. 
here. So in this video clip, we have this young lady named Lexi, and she's bungee jumping. Okay. So, uh, guys, so um, as she's bungee jumping here, you clearly, uh, um, you clearly see gravity is acting on her, and she's accelerating downward. Uh, but at some point, notice how this cord of this rope, it tightens. And so as it tightens, notice um, um, when she lands into the river, she's not going to fully go into the river uh, because of that cord there. So notice what happens here. So notice we have various forces involved here. So again, she's not going to fully go into the river because of the cord, the rope that is tightening up um, as she falls. Okay, so guys, let's, let us make sense of what's happening here. Okay, so at this moment that Lexi jumps, okay, um, the dominant force acting on her is clearly gravity. So gravity is pulling her downward. So gravity is the dominant force acting on her. Okay, so if gravity is the dominant force, and of course there's a little bit of air resistance, but for now, you know, you know, the dominant force is gravity, uh, right, right at the moment that she jumps. Okay. So right at the moment that she jumps, gravity is acting on her. So she's clearly accelerating. She's clearly speeding up in the negative direction. But notice, guys, as she continues to fall, notice that rope that is connected to her, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So now we're introducing another force. Guys, the force from this rope is what physicists call tension. That is the tension force. Okay. Okay, and just so you guys know, in this case right here, the tension force will be larger than gravity. Okay, so guys, if the tension force is larger than gravity, what do you guys think what Lexi would do at this moment here? She's going to speed up or she's going to slow down if tension is larger than gravity. Slow down. Yeah, she's clearly going to slow down. And guys, you clearly see she's slowing down because she's not going to go fully into the water. In fact, she's going to slow down, come to a stop, and then her body is going to change directions. It's going to start moving in the opposite direction. So now she's going to come to a stop. But notice tension is still the larger force. And so, so now, um, instead of moving in the negative direction, she's now moving in the... Watch this. At this moment here, she's now moving in the positive direction. So I want you guys to see here that um, 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 you can have one force diagram that can explain multiple scenarios. So what are the multiple scenarios this force diagram could be describing here? I'm going to say it again. Lexi, she could either be slowing down in the negative direction or she could be speeding up in the positive direction. So notice as she comes out of the, that water, she begins picking up speed because now, now she's moving in the direction of the, normal, of, of the dominant force. She's now moving in the direction of the dominant force. So as a general rule, hopefully you guys see if you're moving opposite the direction of the dominant force, you're going to be slowing down. If you're moving in the direction of the dominant force, you're going to be speeding up. Okay. So if you guys got that, then you guys understand the basic concepts for us to be able to do this worksheet here. So I'm going to pause. Okay, let me exit out of this video. Okay. Now, here's where I need everybody to pull out their pen and paper. Again, we're just going to focus on doing the first six problems, and the rest you're going to do by yourselves. Okay. Okay. Now, let me open, you know what, let me open up comedy just to, because uh, I, I want to make annotations on this, uh, on this file here. By the way, I'm just curious, how many of you guys in here plan on skydiving at some point in your lives? How many of you guys think that's something you want to do? <laughs> Anyone? I'm just curious if you want to go skydiving. Okay, um, I see Layla raised her hand. Um, all right, I, we got some brave souls in there. In here. Um, um, by the way, guys, if you want to skydive, you do have to be um, eighteen. They, they don't. They won't let you skydive unless you're eighteen. Um, Demaya said nope. <laughs> and the reason why, guys, guys, the reason why you have to be eighteen is because 
um, before you do it, you have to sign a release form in that in case something happens, like your family, your um, um, your family won't sue the company. Um, but I want you guys to know the chances of something happening is very rare. Like basically, st 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 statistically, you have a higher probability of getting killed in a car accident than skydiving. So st statistically, it's pretty safe. Statist statistically. Okay. Uh, <laughs> What'd you say? That makes me feel pretty safe. Yeah, so, yeah. So, statistically, it's it's you know, I mean, I mean, that's not to say accidents don't happen. Like in, like anything in life, accidents do happen. But statistically, you know, um, statistically, you're safer than being in a car whenever you're going skydiving, according to the statistics. Um, it's actually pretty fun. <laughs> All right, does everybody have their pen and paper ready? Okay. So again, I'm just going to focus on these first six here. Um, and again, guys, you do not have to draw these diagrams. Basically, you just have to write what I write. And also, guys, I'm going to um, I'm going to kind of skip around because um, um, I want I want to do the easy ones first, and I kind of want you know do the harder ones next. Um, so I'm not going to be going in any order. So on your paper, your um, 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 your your solutions don't have to be in any particular order. As long as you have all of them, I'm fine. Okay. So guys, I want to start with number three. Okay. So the instructions say, below, describe all the possible situations the free body diagram could be depicting. So guys, for each situation, it's up to you to tell me whether or not the object is speeding up, slowing down, at rest, or is it moving at a constant velocity? So you have to be able to tell me that. And also, you have to be able to tell me what is this direction of motion. Okay, so let's start with number three. Number three tells us this object is in motion to the left. So if that's the case, this free body diagram, what are all the possible situations the free body diagram could be depicting? Okay, so here's the first thing you guys want to do. If the object is moving to the left, that immediately tells you that you have a negative velocity, okay? And by the way, let me say something here. I'm just, just, I know I've already said it, but I want to say this again. Any force, any force that's pointed straight up is acting in the positive direction. Any force pointed straight down is acting in the negative direction. And any force acting to the right is acting in the positive direction. Any force acting to the left is pointed in the negative direction. So just something I want need for you guys to keep in mind. Okay. So going back to number three. So we've already said this object is in motion to the left. So we know that this object has a negative velocity. That's the first thing you want to do. You want to write down where it's traveling. The second thing you want to do. You want to write down what are what what is the sum of the forces. Okay, so the sum of the forces here, okay, guys, if I add up all these forces here acting on this object, what is my resultant force? Can someone tell me? Obviously, if you if you add up the up force and the down force, obviously, the, the, you know, these are going to cancel each other out, right? Because positive 3 plus negative 3 gives you 0, right? So these forces balance, but when you add up these forces here, what do you get here, guys? If you add up, if you combine negative seven with negative positive three, what do you get, guys? Four. Negative four, exactly. Okay, so now someone tell me if this object is moving to the left and the dominant force is also moving toward the left, will this object be speeding up or slowing down? What do y'all think? Slowing down. Uh, no, not, it, remember, speeding up. Speeding up. Would it be slowing down? No, it's speeding up. Remember what I said, guys. Um, um, if if the object is moving in the direction of the dominant force, you're going to be speeding up. So, Serenity, you're right. So, it's going to be speeding up. So, what you guys, what would you write down? You write down. So, to be specific, this object is speeding up while moving. In the negative direction. How is it speeding? Hold on for a second. Give me just a second. 
so it's speeding up in the negative direction. Okay, so everything, everything in red, that's what you guys are responsible for writing. That's number three. That's all you have to write for number three. Uh, guys, um, um, if you get confused on knowing whether or not something is speeding up or slowing down, I'm going to give you a hint, guys. Uh, Y'all see these signs here? Both these signs are negative. If both these signs are, are the same, the object is always speeding up. If their signs are different, the object is always slowing down. Someone asked me, okay, does everybody understand why it's speeding up though? Guys, remember, when we when we watched the skydiving video, if, um, um, if I was moving downward and gravity was the dominant force acting on me, if I'm moving in the direction of the dominant force, I'm going to be speeding up. But if I'm moving opposite the direction of the normal force of the dominant force, I'm going to be slowing down. And we saw that with the with the parachute. The moment the parachute came out, air became the dominant force. So if I was moving opposite the direction of the dominant force, I'm going to be slowing down. In this case right here, it says the object is moving to the left. And if you notice, if you look at the diagram, the dominant force is also acting to the left. So the object is moving in the direction of the dominant force. So this, uh, so here the object must be speeding up. Another way of knowing this, guys, if both these signs are the same, you're going to always be speeding up. So here we have a negative and a negative. If you see a negative and a negative or a positive and a positive, it always indicates speeding up. Uh, if you see uh, uh, if you see um, one sign is positive and one sign that is negative, that always indicates slowing down. Any questions on number three? Y'all got y'all got that written down. So. Whenever I'm grading this, I'm, I'm basically going to be looking for what's, what's written in red. Because that's your answer. Okay, let's let's do some more scenarios. Uh, let's look at let's look at number one. Now, number one is actually easy. It's actually easier than number three. Um, because look, number one says this object is just sitting on a table. Okay. If it's sitting on a table, by definition, the object's at rest. So if it's at rest, the velocity is just zero. You know, the velocity it's, it's neither positive nor negative. You, you literally have zero velocity. So the velocity is just zero. Okay. What are the sum of the forces here, guys? If I add up all these forces acting on this object, well, it's just what here? When I combine positive two with negative two, I just get what? Zero. Zero newtons. Oh, so notice, guys, notice here we have a situation here where the object is not moving and the forces are balanced. So what does Newton's first law say, is, guys? An object at rest will what? Will stay at rest. Stay at rest. So literally for number one, you would just put this object is just at rest. That's the only thing that could be happening here. Okay. So that's number one. Guys, anytime you have balanced forces, um, you immediately know the object could be at rest or it could be moving at a constant velocity, depending on the scenario. Here we're told the object was just sitting down. It wasn't in motion. So if it's sitting on a table, uh, an object at rest wants to stay at rest. Uh, because the forces are balanced, there are no unbalanced forces here. The sum of the forces is the sum of the forces equal to zero. Okay, y'all got that written down? Can I move on? Okay, let me let me erase this and move on to something else. Okay, you know, again, I'm skipping around. Um, I tell you what, let, let's look at number five. Number five is a good one. Okay. So number five says this object is moving down. So it's moving like this. So that immediately tells us we are moving in the negative direction. So the first thing you want to do, you want to write down that object has a negative velocity because it's moving downward. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do, you want to figure out the sum of the forces acting on the object. When you add up all the forces acting on the object, what do you get? 
So guys, what are the sum of the forces here when I add those up? What is positive 6 plus negative 2? 4. Yes, sir. Um, it is positive 4. Positive 4 newtons. Ah, so I want you guys to know what's going on here. This object is moving against the dominant force. So are we speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. Slowing down, exactly. And the way you know that, because notice this sign is negative, this sign is positive. So that means we must that means we must be slowing down. To be specific, we're slowing down in the negative it's direction. Like the six newtons is like the parachute and a negative two newtons is you and a dude. Yeah, yes, the, the the negative two represents the it represents the force of gravity acting on me and a dude. It represents the weight of us. Yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah. I, I like that. You yeah, I, I like that you're making that connection. <laughs> yeah, not many students do that. Slowing down in the hold on. So it's slowing down in the negative direction. But yeah, you can think of it this way. So you can think of this is a situation where we're 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 moving and so negative two will represent the, the weight of me and the guy, right? Because the force of gravity is responsible for our weight. And then um and then the six newtons will be like the 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 air pushing on the parachute. Yeah. So here we're slowing down. Okay. Okay, I'm 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 gonna give y'all five seconds to get that written down. Y'all got it. So when I have a question, yes, ma'am. So when like how um four, five, and six have that thing in the beginning of the object is doing blah blah blah. Does that determine anything or? Yes, it determines your direction of motion. Mm -hmm. So for example, on number four, if the object is moving to the right, that means your velocity is that's a positive velocity. On number six, for your object moving to the left, that's a negative velocity. negative velocity. Okay. But what about number two? No, number two is interesting. Let me let's go to number two because I, I haven't talked about that yet. Uh, trying to erase this. Okay, on number two here. Okay, number two tells us this object is moving vertically. Okay. So again, notice uh, um, notice what the instructions say. Describe all of the possible situations this free body diagram could be depicting. Sometimes you could have more than one situation that could be happening, um, as we saw in the video. Um, so guys, number two says this object is moving vertically. What does vertically mean? Vertically means that the object could be, it could be either going up or it could be doing what? Going down. So that's what vertical means. Vertical means up or down. If you see horizontally, that means it could either be moving to the left or to the right. But if you see vertically, vertically means up or down. So, so on number two, guys, um, um, we have to deal with two possible situations. We could either be moving up or we, we could be moving down, right? Because that's what vertical means. Okay. So let me. So what are the possible situations here? Well, so guys, if the object is moving up, that means it will have a positive velocity. But if it was moving down, that means it would have a negative velocity. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do, we want to look at the sum of the forces. When I add up the sum of my forces acting on my object here, guys, when you combine these forces, what, um, 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 what do you get? Negative three. Yep. Neg negative three. Negative three newtons. Exactly. Because, you know, the dominant force points down here. So, you know, the, the, the sum of the forces is 
negative three newtons. Okay. So guys, so by now it should be easy to look at this and kind of see what are our, what are our um, so like slowing what, down in a negative down. direction. Uh, no, slowing down the positive direction. Oh, because okay. the velocity is the direction, yeah. right? Yeah, the velocity is the direction. Yeah, the velocity yeah. always indicate your direction of travel. Exactly. So guys, here are two situations here. On number on number two, your answer literally is the the object could either be slowing down in the positive direction. Or it could be speeding up in the negative direction. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. Slowing down in the positive direction. And just because it's that vertical, it could be either which one? Yes, exactly. You're exactly right. Anytime On the worksheet, anytime you see vertical, that means it could either be up or down. If you see horizontal, that, that could mean either left or right. You're exactly right. Yeah. So it has to be specific for us to... Um... Yeah, for you only to have one possible scenario. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You got it. You got it. Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, so guys, everything that I have written down in red is your answer for number two. Okay. So guys, remember, if, if, if these signs are different, the object is always slowing down. If these signs are the same, the object is always speeding up. So, guys, the point that I want you guys to remember, and this is something I give you guys to keep in this class, is that that sometimes one free body diagram could be describing more than one scenario. When I say free body diagram, it's just another term for force diagram. And guys, and, and, and guys, and we saw that when Lexi was going bungee jumping. Notice how you know, you know, even though we we only had two forces acting on her, gravity and tension from the from the rope. You know, she was she was either slowing down in the negative direction or she was speeding up in the positive direction. So depending depending on your scenario, um, um, depending on your situation, um, you can have more than one, um, more than one possible situation that can describe the same force diagram. Okay, let us do, does, does everybody got that written down? I know that. Uh, okay. Great. All right, guys, we're, we're going to do a few more, then I'm going to let you guys go for today uh, and finish the rest on your own. Just we're, we're, I just want to do a few more with you guys just to be sure everybody got um, understand how to finish this on your uh, finish this by yourself. Okay. Okay. Um, looking at number four, number four is actually an easy one. Okay. Number four tells us this object is moving to the right. So if we're moving to the right, that must mean uh, we have a if we're moving to the right. That must means we have a positive velocity. OK. Um, and the sum of the forces here. The sum of the forces here is equal to zero. So, OK. So, guys, clearly we have a situation where our forces are balance so right, the um the sum of all the forces equals zero so this this so here our forces are balanced so guys if our forces are balanced what does newton's first law say is an object in motion will what stay in motion stay in motion at a what constant speed constant speed or other words the constant velocity so this object is moving at a constant velocity let me just write down what's happening here. So this object is moving at a constant velocity. In the positive direction.
All right, because the, all the forces are balanced. So, so wherever it's going, that's where it's going to keep going. Okay, guys. On number um, uh, number six is actually pretty easy. I mean, I, um, um, you guys can clearly see that's a situation here where our forces are balanced as well. And notice how it says the object is in motion to the left. So here you would say this object so obviously has a negative velocity, and the sum of the forces is zero. So here you would just say that um, this object is moving at a constant velocity in the negative direction. So number six is object moving at a constant velocity in the negative direction. It will be the negative direction because it's the left, right? Yes. Because it's because it's moving to the left, it has a negative velocity. So yeah. And so, then it will be zero in, right? For the sum of the forces will be zero in. Yep. And zero and distance. That, yep. And then constant velocity in the negative direction. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, that was one through six. Um, guys, if you feel confident with this, um, feel free to go ahead and sign out. Um, but I tell you what, I'm going to do one more on the back for those of you guys who would like me to do one more. If y'all would like me to do one more with you guys, y'all can stay on. I'm sorry. What numbers do we have to do? Well, you you, you have to do all of them um, and turn them in. But but we, we did one through six together. So, but 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 you you have to turn in everything. You want us to do seven through twelve? Yes. Mm -hmm. But but what I'm saying is take a picture of everything and turn it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. And remember, and remember, Serenity, you do not have to draw the pictures. Can you scroll back up to six? Yep, I can. Thank you. I just need to write it down. No, you're good. You're good. I got plenty of time. Again, guys, if you if you guys feel like you understand this, you are free to go. But how many? Would anybody like me to do one more? Or y'all think y'all got this? I could do one more if y'all want me to. It's up to y'all. And you said that we don't have to draw the picture? You do not have to draw the picture. Nope. I need you to do number six again. That will be negative velocity. Okay. Six. Okay. Okay. Let me let me do number six again because um I can do number six. Yeah, guys, give me just a second. I'm, I'm gonna do number six and I'm gonna do one more after that. Okay. So okay, guys, look at number six. On number six. It says, guys, this object is in motion to the left. So, guys, to the left means our velocity is what? Negative. negative. Exactly. Guys, remember that anything anything moving to the left has a negative velocity. Anything moving to the right has a positive velocity. Anything moving up has a positive velocity. Anything moving down has a negative velocity. Okay. So this object is moving to the left. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to write down, what are the sum of the forces? Guys, if you combine these forces... Negative three plus positive three. What do you get? Zero. Yeah, you get zero newtons. Okay. So is this an unbalanced case or a balanced case? Wait, what? Are we? Unbalanced. No, unbalanced. Un no, balance. balance, balance. Yeah. Is it zero? Is yeah because the sum of the forces zero. So these forces balance each other out. You know. Um, so if they balance each other out, what does Newton's first law say? It's an object in motion will. Stay in, motion. Stay, in motion stay in motion at a constant velocity. So this object is just staying in motion at a constant velocity in the negative direction. In the negative direction because it's moving to the left. Okay. Okay, y'all, let me know when y'all get that written down so I can do one more with you all. Again, I just want to be clear that everybody understands this. I got it. Okay.
perfect. Okay, guys, let us look at number eight. I like number eight. Number eight is an interesting problem. So guys, remember what we're what we're doing, we're describing all the possible scenarios a free body diagram could be depicting. So number eight says this object is moving horizontally. So that means we could have two possible scenarios. Because guys, what does horizontal mean? The object could either be moving to the left or right. To the left or to the right. Exactly. So it could be moving to the left. Uh, it could be moving to the left. Or it could be moving to the right. On the, again, guys, we're doing number eight. We're working on number eight. If it's moving to the left, what would, what would its velocity be? Negative. Yeah. Or if it's moving to the right, its velocity could be? Positive. Positive. Yep. So that's the first thing you positive. want to do. I'm sorry? That's it. I'm going to go with positive. Yep. If it's moving to the right. So so there are two things that could be happening. It can be moving to the left, it can be moving to the right. Okay. Um, now... The question, the, the next question we want to ask ourselves, if we add up all the forces acting on the object, the sum of the forces, in this five. case, yeah, positive five newtons. So for, for this situation, the sum of the forces is equal to positive five newtons. Okay. So y'all tell me what's happening here. We could either be speeding it up in the positive direction for yep, right. Yep. Or we could be what? You're right. This is speeding up, but this must be what? Slowing down. Slowing down. Yeah, because these signs are different. Anytime one is negative and the other is positive, that means slowing down. Okay. So we could either be slowing down in the negative direction or we could be speeding up in the positive direction. So let me write that down. So slowing down. Or we could be speeding up. So again, these are the possible scenarios that this that this force diagram could be depicting. And I am running out of room. Okay, I got it. Sorry, my handwriting is messy. Hopefully, y'all can read that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to read, kind of read that. With, okay, so we could either be slowing down in the negative direction or we could be speeding up in the positive direction. Those are our possible scenarios for our situation in which our object is moving horizontally. Okay, guys, um, any immediate questions for me? Again, all you have to do is just finish the rest. Um, take a picture of your all of your work, so 1 through 12. Take a picture of it, upload it to Schoology. That is your grade for today. That shouldn't take you no more than five minutes to do because you don't basically you only have five more left. Um, guys, um, I'm going to remain on the Zoom call, so you guys are free to go, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to log back in. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to be on the Zoom call to 10.59 because that's when six period ends. But if y'all don't have any questions, you guys are free to go, and remember, I'm going to see you all on Friday. You guys do have to log in on Friday. You guys have a blessed day, and I will see you all in two days. You are uploading this to your channel, right?